Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is analytical method validations. For analytical method validations, the general chapter USP 1225 is very useful. USP chapter 1224 and USP chapter 1226 also have to be studied along with the USP 1225 chapter. USP 1224 deals with the transfer of analytical procedures and this chapter deals with the recommendations for the analytical method transfer from one laboratory to the other successfully. USP 1226 deals with requirements of verification of compendial procedures. Compendial means pharmacopial procedures. So the knowledge is incomplete if you don't understand all the three guidelines. The ICH Q2R1 provides information on validations of analytical procedures, text and methodology. Let us see how the characteristics of analytical method validations are addressed. There is a specific list of characteristics to establish the validated status of the analytical method. What is analytical method validation? Before that, let us understand what is validation. Validation is a documented evidence to prove that that particular activity yields the results as expected always. So analytical method validation is a documented proof to show that when adopted in the laboratory, it would give accurate results consistently again and again. So if the following list, accuracy, precision, specificity, detection limit, which is also called limit of detection, quantitation limit, which is also called as limit of quantitation, linearity, range, and robustness. So the following listed scientific characteristics are established. It is considered that the analytical method is validated and would yield expected accurate results again and again. See the list. Let us understand the importance and relevance of each characteristics in detail. Let us understand the intent of each characteristic. What is accuracy? It is the closeness of the test results obtained by the procedure to the true value. This is also termed as unbiasedness or trueness. So these two words are synonyms for true value. See this example. If the true value of SA of a substance is 99.0%, any test result obtained between 98.95% and 99.04% is considered as true value. The accuracy depends on the number of digits after the decimal points. The accuracy changes stringently 10 times for every one digit increase after the decimal point. Refer section 7.20 of USP general chapters which talks about how the rounding off is done depending upon the number of digits after the decimal points. This is very useful to understand the accuracy. Let us understand what is precision. It is the degree of agreement among the individual test results when the test method is applied repeatedly. The degree of agreement expressed as a statistical evaluated parameter. The degree of agreement is expressed as standard deviation or relative standard deviation. 
Standard deviation is an absolute deviation value from the individual values. Whereas relative standard deviation is a relative term which is derived as percentage. This is calculated by multiplying the standard deviation with 100 and divide by average of the test results obtained. See this example. If the test results are 98.88, 98 98.85, 99, 99.02, and 99.04, the standard deviation calculated will be 0.087, which is quite low and acceptable. Hence, the results are considered as precise. Then how do you calculate the standard deviation? There is a simple formula. In this, x is the individual value. x bar is the average or the mean values of the entire uh, sample results. And n is the number of sample samples taken for calculating the standard deviation. You don't worry too much about this calculation. You can simply calculate it in the Excel sheet. Just for fun, you can try once or twice. Let us understand specificity. It is the ability to assess unequivocally the analyte in the presence of other components like impurities, degradation products, etc. This is the proof that the method can determine accurately without any ambiguity the analyte. Unequivocally means without any element of doubt and with specificity. What is specificity? This is like a thumb impression that is very specific to a particular person. How a person is identified? It is a thumb impression which is very specific to a particular person, isn't it? So your analytical method should have such a specificity to identify the analyte and evaluate accurately. Let us try to understand more on these characteristics. Detection limit. What is that? It is the lowest amount of the analyte in a sample that can be detected. Quantitation limit. It is the lowest amount of the analyte in a sample that can be determined with acceptable precision and accuracy. Look at this statement. Detection limit is the lowest amount of analyte detected. Look at the word detected. That means the analyte appears as a small peak at this concentration. You have to carefully define what is that small peak above the noise of the baseline be taken into consideration as a peak of analyte. Quantitation limit is the lowest amount of the analyte that can be estimated or determined with acceptable precision and accuracy of the analytical method. But generally three times the detection limit is acceptable as quantitation limit as a thumb rule. There are other statistical methods like y-intercept for calculating detection limit. For much more details, you can refer USP 621 or EP 2.2.29 or EP 2.2.46. You get really lot more details. Now let us see more. Noise is the area counts for baseline noise peaks. When there is no impurity peak, the zoomed noise pattern will be like a big pack of very small peaks. Signal will appear more than the noise when there is an impurity and more than the area of the uh, area count of the noise. The main concept here is to identify what is the noise and what is the signal. For this, let us try to understand what is the signal, what is the noise and what is the signal to noise ratio for any HPLC test. See the zoomed baseline below. The area counts are not same for all. The areas for peaks 
five, eight are much smaller than the peaks one, two, three, six, seven, nine, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. And see the peaks four and ten, the areas are much more. So in this, you have to find out which is a signal and which is a noise. There is a methodology to establish this. USP 621 has given a diagram to understand the signal to noise ratio in more detail. When related substances test method by HPLC is done, unless accurate detection limits and quantitation limits are established, the method validation is incomplete. Characteristics for DL and QL must be addressed in such cases. Generally, 1 is to 1 or 1 is to 3 of the signal to noise ratios are considered for detection limit. This depends on the response factors of the impurities very much. Let us understand the characteristics linearity and range. Linearity is the relationship between the concentration and SA measurements, whereas the range is an interval between the upper and lower levels of the analyte. So at different concentrations of analyte, the SA value should pass for the defined accuracy and precision of the method. The evaluation of linearity can be done by calculation of regression analysis. Range is another characteristic of levels of analyte covering a suitable range up to 120% of the analyte concentration on the upper side and 70 or 80% on the lower side. Robustness is a measure of capacity of the test method to remain unaffected and yield consistent results by unintentional deviations in the laboratory. This is established by deliberate, deliberately varying some parameters such as pH, mobile phase composition, different column. It should be different lot or a supplier, but not the basic requirement. That means it should be the same type of uh, column, but it can be different lot or different supplier. The temperature, the flow rate, stability of the solutions, extraction time, if applicable, are also considered as likely variations that can occur in the laboratory every day. So combination of all the eight characteristics discussed will provide an objective evidence, a proof for establishing that the particular analytical method is suitable and yields results again and again consistently for routine use at laboratory. Along with analytical method validations, it is absolutely necessary to have a good knowledge on verification activity of the analytical procedures for which you can use USP 1226. You have a lot of information in that. Verification activity is a limited validation when it is carried out first time when the compendial method is executed in the laboratory. I hope this insight into the basics of analytical method validation is useful. Read USP chapter 1225 for complete understanding and execution. Refer Q2 R1 for exact execution of the method validation exercise efficiently and effectively. Thank you. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like, and share. Thank you.